Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, I had a request to make a step-by-step -step video of um, UV resin coating FDM prints, okay? Um, I actually needed to print out a couple of these raven skulls for um, a friend's uh, Ewok costume for the for the headdress. And so these are just um, PLA prints. Um, you can see where the, the seam is. Um, there's just two halves and they're printed like that. And um, both of these were printed on my uh, Creality Ender 3 Pro, and they're at 0.2 resolution. So, um, you know, I, I do a lot of props in that resolution just because it's pretty good. And you can see here, um, there's a lot of like stair stepping on these surfaces because that's printed in this orientation. And, you know, it's an FDM printer, right? So it can't deal with that. Now, there's other, you know, variable layer heights and all these other tricks that you can do, but I mean, you're not here to discuss all that. You're here to find out how UV resin coating works. Um, now, I, it's sort of ironic because I, I've tried XTC 3D. I've tried um, fiberglass resin. And I always hate it when they demonstrate uh, this sort of coating technique on a skull because basically there's very few um, sort of really hard edges. It's a lot of smooth shapes. So it's like, well, of course it looks awesome. So I ironically i have to print a skull and so um i apologize for doing that but um i also got this uh piece for a mandalorian helmet um and uh, it's like the rear vent part and i think it, it goes on like so and for this particular model i cut it in half and printed it in two halves so the interesting thing about this one was um i printed it in this orientation so you can see some stair stepping going on here and um Obviously, when it got to this under part, because there was no supports, it's got that sort of like gnarly overhang stuff, right? So um, we want to see how the resin uh, reacts to this in terms of how well good of a job it does. And I believe I printed this at 0.2 as well. Um, I did not sand either of these. So on yesterday's test, I did sand this one just very, very, um, just to get rid of any sort of zits or bumps. These two, I did not sand at all, okay? All I did was... Um, there was some stringing on the edge here. I just removed that because I don't want that cotton in the resin. And I sanded the edges because um, there was a, a skirt or whatever uh, when I printed these standing up. So I just sanded that off and glued them together. So let's see how this works. Um, first things first is safety. Make sure you got gloves on. Uh, make sure you got a respirator uh, if you're doing this indoors. And um, uh, if not, do it outdoors, right? Uh, but make sure, and safety glasses as well, too. So I'm using my Elgu uh, resin. This is a blue color, I believe. Um, and um, I, I, it seems to work fine for me. Um, I, and you got to shake it up first to make sure it's thoroughly, sh you know, mixed in there. Um, I had somebody comment that they tried this with clear resin and it didn't work so well. So, again, I can't comment on that. Um, I don't have any clear resin to test, so... I'm just gonna try it on this. Um, so yeah, shaking it up, and then I got myself a cheap chip brush. You can use a better quality brush if you want, but this is, um, I don't wanna use my nice uh, art brushes on this test. And then I've got a little cup that I'm gonna decant some of the resin into. We'll do that right now. Make sure you got a paper towel handy too. And of course your resin curing light. Um, so I'm using a, uh, a UV light. I think it's like a 50 watt one that I got off Amazon. And, um, so now I'm only gonna pour out, let's just see how far this goes, right? I'm, I'm maybe pouring out like a teaspoon's worth there, okay? Maybe, is that even a teaspoon? Barely, um, that's, that's about a teaspoon right there, okay? I'm gonna close this back up. I'm gonna wipe the cap a little bit first. Just tighten that guy back up, okay? Um, and we're just gonna go right at it. So I got these little stands and things um, for this skull. And so, yeah, I did not sand it. I didn't even fill the seam or anything. I'm just gonna go at it and we'll see how this works. So um, I may not, one, one thing I discovered is, you know, when you're doing all these print lines is if you go against the print lines, it sort of makes bubbles, okay? so. What I would do is go along the print lines first, um, and then you'll find that this, the resin, because it's a lot thinner, um, somebody else had suggested, oh, why don't you use kind of like traditional um, two-part casting resin, um, which I actually have done before. I, I actually have tried it on prints before, but I find it's very thick. Um, there are different dis viscosities that you can get, um, and you can definitely try that out, but um, 
you know, I again, I just wanted to try this, and initially it was just a test to see if it worked, and it did work quite well. So um, I thought I would just uh, do this sort of step-by-step -step test and see how it goes. And uh, there's merits and pros and cons of, um, you know, any type of material, okay? So um, yes, this UV um, silicone, or sorry, this UV um, S whatever, 3D printing resin uh, for, for resin printers, you know, it's not cheap. It's about $30 for a bottle of that size, uh, at least where I am. It's probably some like 20 something uh, American. I'm in Canada. Um, but, um, you know, for me to buy even a small uh, bottle, like a, I don't even think it's a pint, it might be like 500 milliliters or something of casting resin. I mean, that's like 40 or $45. Um, you know, and, and yes, you're going to get more material and more usage out of that. But I mean, this stuff, it's, it's, this is one of those things where it's like a little goes a long way. You don't really need to, I'm not dousing the whole print. Okay. So what I'm find is really interesting about this is because it's quite runny. Okay. It's decently runny. I, I sort of used, um, the analogy that it's like coffee cream, but it's probably thicker than that. Um, thicker than, or sorry, runnier than pancake syrup. Okay, is maybe a consistency that I would call this, um, but uh, it's not nearly as thick as sort of the regular casting resins I've used before. I'm not too concerned about this under part because um, it's going to be mounted on something, um, and so yeah, I'm I'm not concerned about that. So I'm going to be placing it on a little stand, um, and uh, I'm just going to be probably flipping it over, like I'll probably be rotating it um, sort of by hand uh, with a little um, pair of pliers or something like that under my UV light to cure it. So here again, you know, if you can go go with the print lines, I find if you go this way, it sort of creates a lot of bubbles. Sorry, I have to get that in camera, right? So try to go with the print lines um, and don't overwork it. I find if you like overwork it, you know, like you'll actually start to get more bubbles, so you don't really need to do that. I just brush it in, and if you just, you know, give it a minute, it'll just uh, settle. Like, look at this part here. Sorry. Look at this part over here. Um, it, You know, most of the bubbles are gone, and it's settled quite nicely. I noticed one of the things that had happened um, when I uh, sanded the previous version yesterday. Sorry, I'm going to touch the top of this just to squeeze this little bracket on I'll wipe off my gloved hand there and just give this a little oops that's way too much brush again um I noticed that when I sanded it um sometimes you can get a lot more um like just little bumps and and particles um on the on the finish okay so just be careful of that when you're when you're doing this, I again, you can try to sand the print. Um, I, I don't think this is a cure-all for all, you know, this isn't the silver bullet for every kind of 3D print. Um, it just helps in certain circumstances. And for me, I'm probably going to use it for smaller objects. You can, I don't know if you can see that, but way in the back of the, this was printed, this front half of the, half of the skull was printed this way. So there's those same sort of, um, you know, deviations in the print. So th I found this was really handy yesterday was I would fill, not fill, but I would put just a little bit more resin in these eye sockets and um, that helped a lot with the look of it, okay? So there it is. That's all I'm going to do to it. Um, I don't know. It only That only took like a minute or so to do or a couple minutes tops. So um, I'm going to move the camera over and then I'm going to hold it like this so that I can get that resin pooled in the little eye sockets there and um, we'll see what that looks like and so I just did one coat um, you can do two coats of course but then that kind of softens hard edges okay um, but let's see what that looks like okay you can see my uh, UV curing box here I'm just gonna peek the camera over the other side um, and I'm just holding the skull under the light okay so I'm doing this uh, particular side first because again I wanted to um, cure the resin that sort of pooled into those eye sockets and then what I've been doing is just rotating it around um, it's really a bit of an odd shape to hold right so um, 
I know like UV light's not super, super dangerous. You obviously don't want to look at it. You don't want to expose it to your skin for too long, but I am wearing gloves and pliers and stuff. I know people are probably saying I'm being overly cautious because the sun is probably more dangerous uh, than this, but you know, I'm playing it safe, right? So yeah, what I did was I just basically moved it around. I can't really do it with my hand and hold the camera at the same time, but I was basically turning it around upside down and then um, I put it on my little uh, rotating base over there, okay? So I basically let it, um, you know, let the UV cure the resin, um, and I just left it in there for maybe two minutes, and um, yeah, that was enough to um, cure it. Now, it's completely up to you if you want to sand it um, afterwards. Um, it's also up to you if you want to do one coat or two coats. Um, on the other finished skull that you saw, um, I actually did apply two coats uh, just to see what it would look like and obviously it's very very smooth but then um, I find it obscures uh, some of the details so I'm gonna do this one with just one coat okay I'm kind of trying to show the worst case example like if you don't put a ton of effort into it what's the worst case so obviously if you put more effort into it it's gonna look better right so I'm gonna do this one and let this cure up. It's obviously boring for you to watch that, but I'm gonna do that uh, Mandalorian helmet piece next and we will compare the results afterwards. Uh, Mandalorian helmet piece here. Um, same thing, um, you know, just brushing it on. Um, it's kind of hard to do the, uh, go along the print lines with this one, but um, I'm going, I'm curious as to see what happens with, um, with this, okay? Like sort of how filled it gets. Um, I would go carefully and not, I wouldn't put on too much because what's going to happen is, is if you lay on way too much is it's going to fill um, not only all these nooks and crannies, but it's also going to sort of round off these sharp corners. Um, and again, that's why I, uh, I'm always dubious, you know, like you see the XTC 3D one and it's like, oh, they're doing a skull and it's just like everything is soft edges, uh, round edges. and you know, of course, stuff like that's just going to look good, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen with a, sort of a, a model or a print that's got like sharp edges and round surfaces. Obviously, you need to do this in a room that's not exposed to sunlight. So I'm in a, um, a room that's got curtains in it and um, the window is, is covered with uh, with uh, blinds or curtains. And so, you you know, we're eliminating any UV light coming in that's potentially going to cure the resin while we're working. Um, this is that area that was an overhang. So again, I'm gonna, I'm curious to see what happens when that area kind of gets filled in, right? Um, again, you want to try to avoid that. You want to avoid it completely pooling because that can round off areas that you might not want rounded off. Okay. So, um, oops, and you can see there's, there's quite a bit there. And this is that other area, the sort of stair-stepped area, right? So let's just brush a bit in there. Now I've heard I, one person, when I posted my video um, yesterday, there was one person that said that they actually airbrush the resin on. And I'm really curious about that because that would get you a way smoother um, finish than, I mean, look at this, right? I, there's like hair there, probably from my dog or something. Um, you know, I'm mean, obviously the stuff you can you can sand down afterwards if you want to, but we're trying to do make this as least amount of work as possible. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you can get a good you know finish by sanding this afterwards. Um, and there's there's that top surface, right? So let's see what that layer looks like. Again, I'm not putting very much on. It's just like the the brush is almost somewhat dry now and uh, I'm just brushing a coat on. You can see it's pooled. Just by the way, I'm angling it towards the, the camera. You can see, look at this. It's all pooled in there, right? So I kind of want to maybe brush some of that out. I've got this paper towel here. I can kind of blot some of it out with, okay? But you see that? I'm just trying to get some of it out because I don't want to completely obliterate every single detail. Um, I did notice this when I'm curing stuff under the UV light too. It completely depends on which way you hold. You know, if I if I held it angled like this, everything would start to pool in that corner and I would get a buildup of resin. So that's just something to be careful of um, or to be mindful of when you're doing this. But here we go, everything's coated. 
and uh, I'm just trying to get rid of some of the excess resin. And again, this is a test, you know, this isn't, I'm not gonna be like super bummed or something if this doesn't work. Um, but this is just an interesting kind of technique to have in the arsenal, right? So, and the, I think the benefit, the one benefit of, of this over kind of regular um, resin, or sorry, casting resin, is the work time, right? I mean, if I was doing this with casting resin, I'd only have whatever, a couple minutes to, uh, to, to do this. I mean, yes, there's resins with longer cure times and whatnot, but I guess this is just interesting because you can kind of manipulate it. You can kind of work with the time and, and see how things work out, right? So I'm going to stick this into the UV curing station and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So I just wanted to show that after coating both of those items and of the maybe teaspoon amount that I doled out, there's still more than half of it left, okay? So it used very, very little. Um, I, obviously, I could have, could have poured out less and uh, to start with, but I mean, um, and that's probably a good idea is don't only decant the amount that you need for now because you might need to, you might want to decant some more, pour some out, and then um, do a second coat, but just be careful with your estimates. All right, so check this guy out. It's cured, okay? It's been in the um, UV curing station for about two minutes, and it's pretty good. Um, you can obviously see, because this is the blue resin and I'm doing it on black, um, you can kind of see where it pools more. So look at that seam where the two halves were joined. I did sand the edges of that before I glued it together so you can see it filled it quite nicely. Um, the, my trick did work, I kind of learned from yesterday, the, those stair-stepped edges inside I ended up you know, holding it like this so the, the UV light would come in this direction and it cured it. Side effect of that is look at look, this little ball of, or this little blob of resin on the bottom. Um, basically it kind of dr not dripped but it kind of pooled and then it ended up there. Not a big deal, you can sand it, right? Um, so, you know, do I do a second coat? I'm not going to do a second coat, okay? I'm going to do it with, just with this one coat. You can see here, it maybe got a little thin, right? Maybe I didn't get enough resin on there. Um, but again, I kind of want to show what the, the worst example would be. So, um, the next step that I do with this is, um, I clean it off. Because the, the issue right now is it's still got a bit of a residue and attack to it. And I did uh, paint something yesterday. It just took a lot longer to dry and then I'm sort of always wondering like well did it actually cure underneath the paint that's kind of like dangerous right so um what I did I was like well you know with my resin prints I wash them in alcohol so why can't I wash this in alcohol so that's essentially what I did so I've got just a small takeout food container tray here and I've got a spray bottle with 99% EPA in it and then all I do is rinse off the print much like the way that I would do a resin one, okay? Um, not using very much, it just needs, I just need like one rinse. Um, now, on yesterday's prints, that's literally all I did, and I walked outside, or I mean, I did this actually outside. I'm doing it inside, because just so I can film it for you guys, but um, by the time I walked inside, it was already dry, okay? So I can, whatever, you can use a paper towel to kind of like pat off any of the extra alcohol, um, but what I found is that when it was dry, um, it basically removed any of that tacky residue um, and um, it made it much just nicer, a nicer surface to, to paint, okay? It, it got rid of all that tack. So that's all I did was I just rinsed it off. You can do it once or twice if you want to just get a little bit extra off. Um, but that's it. That's all I had to do to prepare the print for some paint. So I'm going to throw a coat of primer on here just to show you guys what it looks like because that'll be easier to see any sort of like mistakes and stuff like that. All right, so there's my Mandalorian vent out of the uh, the uh, UV curing station. So it didn't come out too bad. There's a couple, there's like a little flub right there and obviously there's still a little bit of grain there, right? So again, this could be remedied with a second coat or a bit of sanding. Um, in my preference, I would probably do a bit of sanding because um, just I find like as you add more coats you're going to be 
softening these hard edges, okay? And you can see how it filled in those valleys there, right? So um, once we throw primer on this, we're gonna see what it really, really looks like, right? So same thing as before, um, I'm gonna use my IPA and just rinse this off to get kind of the residue off of it. Um, I'm gonna dry that off and then I'm gonna go and paint them um, sorry, one more tip. You can actually use a toothbrush if you want to like scrub this or, or another paintbrush to actually like scrub the residue off. Um, it's not a big deal, I find. I just usually do a rinse and then uh, I'll either a wipe with a paper towel or I blow it off with compressed air and it's not nearly as tacky as it was before. Okay, um, But after this dries, I'm going to do a couple coats of primer and then we'll see what it looks like. After I clean the pieces off with uh, alcohol and dry them off, I throw them back into the UV curing station. Um, I found that um, sometimes there's a little bit of residue and I wasn't sure if it was uncured or not, but I just found like sticking it back in there um, for a couple minutes just reduced the tackiness even further. So um, that's just something I recommend. Um, give that a try. All right, we are back from uh, priming this uh, print. So um, I used Duplicolor um, Hot Rod Gray Sandable Primer. I did not use a filler, a thicker filler primer. Um, I find the, the Sandable Primer goes on thinner, obviously, and it'll just show more imperfections, okay? So here's the one from yesterday. They're both done exactly the same method, except this one was sanded, okay? Um, so just take a look really closely as comparison. So again, this one Sorry, this one over here was, was sanded very lightly. Um, you can see some little um, sort of like textured bumps over there, okay? And that's just from, I think, the fuzz of the PLA. So when you sand it, and I sanded it pretty rough. It was like, I think I used like 220 grit or something like that. Again, it was just a quick once over, um, but they both look pretty good. Um, and I wasn't super careful with them. You can see some bubbles and the resin right there on today's one. Um, now, can you still, oh, and sorry, this one has two coats. This one only has one of the resin. Um, and I think you can see that the most in the beaks, okay? So you can still see just like, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but this one just has a, you can see a few print lines and that's probably because, you know, the brush was sort of getting a bit dry at that point, but um, it's a really, I don't know, just a neat trick or technique, right? There's that little bump from the resin that kind of dripped down. Um, but, uh, you know, used in the right circumstances, it's it's really effective and it's quite fast um, in terms of working time. So um, you can see here, you can still see some print lines in there. I mean, but this is pretty small. This thing's like only six inches. So, I mean, again, I didn't sand anything. I didn't do any kind of other prep work. I didn't do any filler primers or anything. This is just one coat of that UV resin um, and it looks pretty good. All right, so here is the Mandalorian vent piece. Um, it didn't come out too bad. Um, I did notice these little shiny spots and I was wondering what they were and I realized after is there's actually tiny, tiny little cavities here where some resin or some um, alcohol pooled inside. And so when I tipped it and sprayed it with compressed air just to dry it off, some of it came back out. And, I, and so I stuck it back in the UV curing lamp to try to cure it. But that's just something to be careful of is make sure that your print is um, solid, okay? That there's no cavities or anything like that where resin could reside and come back uncured. Um, there's just a couple little, I mean, I don't know if you can tell in the light there, it's, it's really not bad. Um, there's a couple little flubs, like sort of like little lint things, and I suspect that that might be just from, um, I gave it a quick wipe with a paper towel, and uh, it trapped some lint on it before I, I primed it, but um, you can see I'm just sanding some of the sandable primer just to take some of the fuzz off, and it's, it's still pretty good, like you can, I don't, can you see that in the light there? There's a bit of some bumpy texture from, um, the sort of, uh, what do you call it, stringing your hairs from the print. And remember, I didn't, yeah, I sort of did like an initial, just a couple wipes just to get the strings off, um, the little webs off, but I didn't do any, I didn't sand the surface down, okay? So it's essentially, you know, kind of done like three quarters of the work that you would normally do when you're doing like filler primer and stuff like that. So 
again, is it a viable technique? Absolutely. Would I do an entire set of armor or something like this? Maybe not. Okay. Um, I think a really interesting product that somebody could develop like Elgu or, or um, you know, Smooth On or something like that would be like an aerosol, like sprayable version of this. I know that'd be like dangerous and toxic because you got particles that go in the air and they would cure in the sun and stuff. But um, again, somebody else has tried uh, airbrushing uh, the resin on. Um, I would love to try that on a helmet or something like that at some point. But uh, at least with these couple of small prints, you can tell, you know, it's an effective technique. Um, I like the fact that it's thinner than regular casting resin. Again, I've tried XTC. I've tried fiberglass resin. I've had curing issues with it. Um, and I just find this stuff, like, because you have the ability to cure it in the UV curing lamp and you kind of, like, you determine the timing of it and, and how fast it cures uh, and whether or not you want to do multiple coats, that sort of thing, it just has a little bit more flexibility. Um, is it worth the cost? That's up to you to decide, right? But anyways, at least I hope that helps you out um, and gives you a little bit more insight into how this technique works and how you could use it. Obviously... You know, these, I'd be pretty close to just, I would just give them a scuff, maybe one more coat of primer, and then I'd paint them. This guy, I'd need to sand down. I want to make sure that that seam is completely gone. But again, it's kind of done three quarters of the job, okay? The inside here is not perfect, but again, you know, you can clean that up because you would have cleaned it up normally anyways, right, using other techniques. So, um, but again, I hope that helps you out. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Bye.